Good afternoon, this is Katrina Myers and I'm doing the role play for the human sexuality class. The topic of the discussion is how intimacy has been ruined in a marriage with allowing your children to sleep in the bed. First of all, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you for joining me today. Um, first off, let's talk about how long have you and your husband been married? 13 years. 13 years. And how long did you wait before you had your kids? Uh, we were married in 2000, and I uh, gave birth to my first child in 2005. And you have two kids, right? Two I boys. I have two boys. Yes. And would you say that your intimacy was better or worse once you had your kids? Um, it dwindled after kids. Do you think it was caused by something? Uh, I think it was caused by the kids sleeping in our bed. Um, at the beginning, when I first had my first child, there was a... Fear of in me that if they weren't by me and I didn't hear them breathing or moving, that I would not catch something. And so I started out in a bassinet beside the bed. And as they grew older, um, it became in the bed, at which point we finally bought a king size, only to have, upon the birth of my second child, in the bed after he was old enough to move around. So in your opinion, your marriage was great. It's still great, but it, as you birthed these two wonderful children and you felt they were unsafe if they weren't right by you, that something was going to happen, which is a natural mother's instinct, especially first-time mothers. Um, so you naturally put them in bed with you. and Naturally, and um, now I have a 8-year-old in the bed and a set, recently turned 7-year-old in the bed. And it's been a struggle to get them out of the bed. Okay. Um, how many nights do you say that your children sleep in the bed with you? Um, every night they're at home. Okay. Unless they're, they're away at grandmother's or mom and dad have a night out. Okay. And how often do mom and dad have a night out? Um, just me and him together coming home with no kids. Roughly a couple times a month. And when you have your nights out, are they um, intimate discussions? Are they about you and your husband connecting, catching up on your relationship? Or is, or is the topic more about children and the kids? More about ch children and the kids. And um, I guess we both kind of avoid that topic. And why do you think that you're avoiding it? Because it's hard to deal with right now getting the kids out of the bed. Is your husband not willing to put them in their own bedrooms? Um, he will put them in their own bedroom, but he will join them. Oh, how sweet. So he, he too has ish, separation issues. issues. Yes. Okay. And both boys have their own bedrooms, so that's not a problem. Correct. And they feel safe in their bedrooms, and they, there's no conflict of that. So now, it's, I, th I think they're a little frightened to sleep alone just because they never have. They never have. Exactly. And that's new to them. When they're at grandmother's house, do they sleep in the bedroom with her? Um... At his mother's, yes, and at my mother's, no. Okay. Um, so your mother, it sounds like, sees the kids more often then. Correct. Okay, so then his mother has the same separation anxiety. If they're not with her, she's worried something's going to happen. Yes. Okay. Um, how does all of this make you feel emotionally in, in your marriage? Um, I feel that we lack a, lo a connection, um, and it being that certain connection to intimacy in our marriage, and I think that it does affect our marriage. Um, it's frustrating. Um, it's like we both want them to be in their own bedrooms. Um, I guess more so I want them to be in their own bedroom than he does, and that affects the marriage because I don't feel like he cares Okay. about it as much as he should. Okay, so your feeling is the hus your husband is not putting forth enough effort in your marriage to say, hey... This is important to me. We need to put our kids in our bedroom. We, as a couple, need to connect. Correct. That's okay. Right. Have you had that conversation with your husband? And um, what is... Yes, we'll make a really good go of it. But like, again, I say, um, he'll go lay down with him to get him to sleep. He'll, he ends up falling asleep. So, again, there's no intimacy if he's sleeping in the bed but with the children. Correct. Okay. It's, it's It's a struggle. Okay. Um... Do you think you're showing your kids a version of a happy, safe marriage? Mm, I don't. I do feel like I'm showing them... No, I don't. Okay. Um, 
Is it because you guys are not communicating and not showing the love, showing the kids how much you guys love each other and how, and communicating and... Yes. Okay. We're just not... Um, as connected? As connected and talk about it in the way that we should. So when you do talk about things, does it escalate into an argument or and both get frustrated or does one get more frustrated than the other? I think um, I get more frustrated than he Because of the... You're yes. disappointed. Yes. Okay. Um... Do you think counseling, marriage counseling, or a sex therapist would improve this? I think a sex therapist would improve this. And what things do you think that they would discuss with you and your husband? Um, how to open up to each other and build that intimacy that's lost again. How to show each other how to resolve the, um, the lack thereof. Communication, communication skills, and intimacy. Intimacy, open, just opening up to each other and a way to open up to each other when there's somebody there that's not um, biased. Okay. When you do reach out to your husband and try to touch him or try to show any affection, is he receptive? Is he, he willing is to? Yes, he's receptive, but um, there's just very little time of that from coming home, both coming home from work, getting kids' homework done, bathing kids, cooking, um, so there's very little time for any kind of... Schedules are yeah, packed. Very much so. And then the bed is packed as well. Exactly. <laughs> um, what are your expectations of a intimate marriage? Um, not necessarily that it has to be you have sex all the time, but more so hold, just holding each other, uh, being compassionate and knowing that I still love you. I, you know, I'm, you still very much turn me on. You respect me. You care about me. And I think those are the things that kind of all have to be a bundle in order for it to be a successful marriage. So all of the things that communication, it's not necessarily sex. It's just the touching, the holding, the feeling important is what you're missing out on yes. in, in your marriage. Okay, I'm going to try and give you uh, some short-term goals for maybe you to try. Um, I would love to see you all go on one date night a week at least, just the two of you, and no topic of kids. They're off limits. And really talk about what you and your husband have been doing. Um, try to touch more during the day. Maybe send each other a, a text saying, hey, love the way you look today, or thanks for putting the dishes in the dishwasher, or thanks for trimming the leak raking the leaves up, something to encourage that before the date might spark okay. something, and then really trying to make sure that the kids are not home at that after that date night. Because I, I, that, that, I think that you're, you and your husband are willing to work it out. It's just we've got to really force the issue of slowly pushing the kids into their own room. I agree. I think there's that's definitely a place to start. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and... I look forward to talking to you again. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you.